let's take some time to appreciate other kinds of roulettes. As mentioned before, trochoids are curves made by discs rolling on straight lines. But an epitrochoid is made when a disc rolls around the outside of a circle. Roll a disc inside a circle and what you've made is a hypotrochoid. These are the mathematical names for the curves you make when using a spirograph toy. Notice that the holes don't lie on the circumference of the discs, though some do come close. There's a special name for epitrochoids and hypotrochoids traced by points on circumferences. Analogous to discs rolling on straight lines, they are epicycloids and hypocycloids. Now, if two circles have the same radius, a point on the rolling one will touch the stationary one exactly once, always in the same spot, creating a cusp. This cute heart-shaped epicycloid is also known as a cardioid. If the rolling circle has half the larger's radius, you'll get a two-cusped epicycloid, the shape of which is called a nephroid, because it apparently looks like a kidney, I guess. One-third the radius gives you three cusps, one-fourth four cusps, and so on. As for hypocycloids, if the inner circle's radius is one-quarter of the larger's, the resulting roulette curve is called an asteroid because it looks like a star, which the ancients also thought about asteroids. One-third the radius, and you've got a deltoid, named after its resemblance to the Greek letter delta. One-half the radius, and, well, you get a straight line. This fun relationship is called a Tusi couple, rotational motion turned into linear motion. Follow a number of points on the rolling circle and you'll get the famous illusion where every individual point moves in a straight line, but the whole thing describes a rolling circle. Put a handle on it and you've built a trammel of Archimedes, aka an ellipsograph when used to make ellipses, aka a hillbilly entertainment center when bought in Osceola, Missouri. Anyway, let's get back to Adam and I's curve comparison build. I have a finish line. 